Hey everyone, welcome back. We are now talking about how you can use the L1 norm to robustify your statistics and your regressions. So this is something I've talked a lot about before, and it is one of the absolute most important aspects of sparsity in general, is how you can use this to robustify all of the things you've been doing forever. Okay? And in fact, uh, there's actually kind of an interesting history here. So when, when you grow up, in any kind of engineering math or applied math department today, you are inundated with least square solutions, L2 norms. We don't even think about the world in terms of other norms. We think about the Euclidean distance, the two norm, least square solutions, pretty much default. If someone tells you to solve a system of equations and it's underdetermined or overdetermined, you use the least squares or the minimum L2 norm solution, okay? But historically, Hundreds of years ago, there was actually a debate about whether or not people should be using the two norm or the one norm, and there were all of these different attributes and virtues of these different norms. So it wasn't as obvious that you should just use the two norm uh, over the one norm. And I think a lot of the reason people use the two norm is because it's computationally easier. It's easier to prove results. It's easier to code up and have these solutions uh, be fast and accurate. Uh, but now we're finding in this era of compressed sensing and sparsity that uh, kind of L1 optimization, L1 uh, regression and regularization has a really, really important role in modern statistics, in modern data processing, in modern machine learning. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about here is this idea. I'm going to start with the simplest example that we've all seen before which is just linear regression, okay? So we're gonna have a bunch of data points, and we're gonna code this up, but we're gonna have a bunch of data points, okay? And those data points are gonna have some rough distribution. Uh, I'm just gonna draw a line through them, right? They fit some, some distribution. Uh, this would be some axes of inputs and outputs. And so we're going to assume that um, Let's call this X and let's call this B. And let's say that this, uh, these data points, we're going to model these data points. We, we just see these data points. We're going to model them as a line, as a linear fit. We're going to say uh, A times X equals B. So we know X and B for all of these data points. And we might try to solve for this A uh, vector, sorry, this A slope that would model the slope of that line. Okay, so, uh, so that's, that's one thing you can do. And you would often do this using least squares. We talked about this in chapter one on the singular value decomposition, how you could find uh, the slope of this line using the least square solution. So what you would literally do um, is you would, uh, you would have a bunch of points here. This would be like you know, x1, b1, x2, b2, all the way up to like x, n, b, n. And they don't have to be ordered from left to right. They could be random order. And then you would have this, uh, this kind of, you know, x1, x2, dot, 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 down to xn vector. And you would have a b1, b2, dot, 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 down to bn vector. Okay, and you would say that this is equal to, so the b vector is equal to the x vector times a number a. And we're trying to solve for this number a. Now, of course, because there's noise on this and this is not a perfect model, this, this doesn't perfectly model the real world, this line, this is never going to exactly equal, right? So I'm never going to find an a that makes this exactly equal. And so what we're going to do is find an a that minimizes the sum of the square of the error. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve for A that minimizes, we're going to minimize kind of A x, this vector x minus this vector B. We're going to minimize some norm of that error. Okay, so we're going to minimize the norm of that error, and we're going to solve for the A that minimizes the norm of that error. Now, what you're used to doing, the least square solution, the uh, kind of the SVD, the singular value decomposition or pseudo inverse solution that you're used to, that almost everyone uses, would minimize the two norm of, uh, of, of this error. Okay, so this is my error here. Error. But this has an Achilles heel. It has a huge glaring problem. And that huge glaring problem is that if I have an outlier, 
if I have an outlier here, so some value that is um, not close to my true distribution, maybe my measurement just was wrong that day, maybe my machine broke or fritzed out or you know somebody tripped on the sensor, something bad happened and you get this bad outlier. When I minimize the two norm error, when I try to find the A that minimizes the two norm error or the sum of the squares of the errors, this is literally um, this error here, this two norm error is literally the sum of the squares of each of those little error terms, term by term. So I would take all of those little point by point errors and I would square them and add them up. Uh, and maybe I would take the square root of all of that. What the, this outlier does, this outlier massively skews the entire distribution because the square error here is so much bigger than for all of these little points, it will change the entire distribution to get closer to that outlier because the squared error penalizes that distance so much. Okay, I drew it a little cartoonish. It wouldn't be that bad, but it would shift the entire distribution far away from the true solution. And that's a big problem, okay? so. Long story short, outliers and corrupt measurements and bad measurements massively skew least squares solutions, okay? And so there is a really simple solution to this, a really simple way to handle outliers and to be robust to outliers, and that is to change this norm from a two norm to a one norm. So if instead of trying to minimize the sum of the squares of the errors of every single data point to that fit, instead what we're going to do is with the one norm, we're going to just sum the absolute values of each of the error terms. So we're not going to square anything. We're not going to take a bad outlier and make it worse. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to add up the absolute value of all of these errors, but it's not going to square anything. That's what the L1 norm is doing. So we're going to so we're going to code this up, and we're going to see what happens when I have a normal, like a nice distribution with an outlier, and I solve for it using a least squares solution and a minimum L1 norm error solution. Okay, so that's going to make a big difference, and this minimum L1 norm solution is going to be much, 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 much closer to the the original true distribution. So this is going to be my L1, and the L1 solution is going to be robust. Very important. It's going to be robust to outliers. It's going to be robust to these big uh, measurement errors. Okay. So that's um, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to code this up.